What up, what up? It's your boy Goober, and today I'm at the top of Mount Hamilton at Yosemite National Park, and I'm going to be talking about how to talk to God, how to communicate with God. Now, I know what you're thinking. First of all, get rid of all the labels, okay, of what you have, what people associate with the meaning of God. Whatever you believe in, uh, it doesn't matter. It's just a word, a label for something that people are experiencing phenomenon that you can't describe some people think that evolution is the creation of all things and as such evolution is your god some people think it's all randomness then randomness is your god some people think statistics some people think it's the universe some people think it's uh you know um, a creator in the heavens whatever it is it's all the same thing in regards to what I'm trying to talk about today. Whatever your God is, how to actually communicate to it. Because look, look around you. You see all this. There's got to be something. This is not all just unexplainable. And there's a force of actual creation that made all this. Okay? So how do you communicate to it? You see all these animals here in the middle of nowhere. They know how to eat. They know where to drink. And since day one, they've been struggling and surviving, but they live here and they reproduce. They continue to be inhabitants of this park, of this wilderness. And so do you as a human. So why is it they're tapped in and you're not? How is it they know exactly where to go for food, uh, who their predators are, how to survive? Like there's this mouse, there's these type of mice under the rocks that come out only when it's cold and then they stay in the rocks at night and they know how to hide from predators but they can't communicate with each other as in the same way humans write books and pass on knowledge to one another so how how is it that they can tap into this creative energy or source that tells them what they need to do in order to survive and I'm going to be talking about how you can communicate with that same force. So, first of all, it starts with massive self-awareness. You need to be able to build a connection with your body where you can sense sensations and be able to tell the differences between what certain sensations are. And the key here is to dial in on the part of you that feels pure part of you that is unexplainable it's deep within your heart or your gut and it's almost this like natural knowledge that you can feel is coming to you that's not self-generated but it's almost like it's moving through you from somewhere else and it's not like voices in your head it's, it's weird it's like this in, intuitive thing that comes to you where you start to understand things and see connections between things without having had to learn about it, okay? That's your natural intelligence as a human being. I don't know what that what the word for this thing is. I'm sure someone's written about it, but that's the key here. Number one is to dial into that. Number two is to tune in to what it's trying to tell you and then move forward with that force. So it's to, to really find God, I mean, to, to talk communicate with God because the whole point is to be able to do things that you want and to manifest things that make your life better and to make it in a way that looks almost miraculous to, it's, it's the same as prayer when you pray and then things start happening where you can't explain it except that you prayed for this you took action and even though the odds were not in your favor, they still happened. And it's because you prayed. So prayer, mantra, affirmations, hypnosis, it's all the same thing, really. It's taking control of your subconscious to the point where you can almost bend reality to your will. And this takes a lot of practice because oftentimes you'll be like, how come I prayed for this thing and I never got it? Um, that happens to everybody right sometimes you just don't get what you want but one thing i've noticed that every time i do pray 
a lot of the times I've gotten whatever I prayed for. And that, as a result, comes from, and maybe you've never experienced that, but I've experienced it so many times that it almost feels stupid not to pray. So when you pray, what I tried to realize, because there were times where I prayed and asked for something specific and got it, and there are times where I didn't pray, and I still got that thing that I wanted, that specific thing that was, again, odds against my favor. And what I noticed, the commonality between the two was dialing in to that pure intention that I felt within myself and then taking massive action towards it by having full trust that it's going to work out. Even though I know it's not going to, I don't have the logistical means of or explanation of how it's going to work out. Deep down, I knew it's going to work out. And in those moments where I didn't pray, I had that deep sense of contentment that it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. It's like you trust in the universe. The second scenario is where I did pray. I had that same feeling that, oh, it's all going to work out because, look, I prayed. I've taken action. There's not more work I can do. If it doesn't work out, then it was never going to work out. In those moments, is dialing into that pure intention. Okay? And then moving forward with full trust that it's going to work out. And really being honest with yourself on how dedicated you're being towards that action. Right? If you have the audacity to pray for something and to channel intent into a specific outcome, then you need to be honest with yourself and how real you're being in the amount of action that you're taking. You have to really take action. And... I don't care if you say this is all just you. Like, it's just, I, don't, I don't care. My, my point is, whether you're praying or manifesting or doing affirmations, the result is the same. You're communicating with this force that makes you seem like you're doing things that are miracles. And you know it's not just you. You 100% know it's not just you. Because if you do, you're being arrogant. And you're... you're this neglecting all the moments where you were not in control and things still worked out and you were lucky. Look, look at it how you will. This is not for you if that's what who you think you are. This is for the person that's actually trying to find connections between these things. So the third layer is going all in. And by I mean literally going all in, living on the edge and full commitment to this thing that you prayed for and taking action towards it with the trust that it's going to work out. And ironically, why I, I say communicating with God is because in these moments, you would think you would have full trust in every action that you take. But contrary, every time I do something like this, I'm on a seesaw of not knowing if it's going to work, okay? even though it's worked out many, many times. And the only reason I go all in and do these crazy things is because I have a deep content that this will work because it came from a pure place. Then I channeled the intent. Then I took massive action. And I had this weird, you know, energy moving through me telling me it's going to work out. You know, just follow the steps. Follow the signs. Um, it's like I'm being directed somewhere. And despite that, there's always an inkling of doubt because I know I live in the real world. And sometimes things don't work out on the first try. And there are times where you can absolutely fail. And there's lessons from that. And that's the humbling part is despite thinking that I have some communication with God that's allowing me to do amazing things, and it doesn't get to my head because every moment that I do something drastic, I understand that I could absolutely fail, that I could die on this mountain. I could just get gusted and who knows? Who knows what the grand scheme of things are? You don't know God's plan. You don't know the universe's plan. You don't know where evolution is taking you. you don't, we don't know what this crazy thing came from. And where it's taking us. So as a result, that's the humbling process that humbles you. Because that's the irony of it. One, on one hand, you want full trust that it's all going to work out miraculously. And you want to go in with full. Because to really see the power of the miracle, you have to go all in risking everything. Yet, the more you, wins you stack up, you have the fear of losing these wins that God gave you in the first place. And... You don't want to be ungrateful by risking everything you've 
come towards and squandering it by chasing after more things. But at the same time, you that is the requirement for creating those miracles, for communicating with God to get what you want by putting everything on the line and going all in. But because you can never do that with full confidence, because you know, again, this is the real world and that you could possibly fail and lose everything. There's that little ego death that humbles you that, hey, I might not make it out of this, right? This Maybe this time it won't work because there were maybe three out of 10 where it didn't work. And there was, in hindsight now, you look back you're like, yeah, it was, there was real lessons and I'm glad those things didn't work. But in the moment, you can't know for sure because sometimes you make a mistake and it's just stupid. It was a stupid mistake and that was the lesson. And other times when you look back, you're like, oh, that was a miracle mistake. So the point is, you're trying to go all in, but you're afraid of losing everything because this thing humbles you to never become full identified that I am you know, the miracle creator, I am God, as some people will say they think they are God. But it's like walking on the seesaw between going all in and realizing you are not even entitled to the result. And if you can continue to do this, you create miracles that are so crazy that stretch your reality of what you think is real. At the same time, you're being humbled because you know by living on the edge, you could lose everything. And that when you're putting the odds against you and you're still winning, that it's not actually your actions and that there is a higher power guiding you through this almost pushing you, guiding you towards your destiny. But at the same time, destiny only happens when you enforce your free will to do these things. It's almost like there's this infinite number of paths that you can take. And you have the free will to go after them by channeling through that intent and that self-awareness that I talked about earlier. And... It's, it's strange because on one hand, you start doing something and it seems like that this is your destiny. On another hand, it only happened because you had the free will to act on it. Because you had the free will to not act on it. And sometimes people are in a lot of pain because they never enforce their free will. And they're just ruled by their impulses and their biological drives. And they can't con access these parts of themselves. And their life is a mess and they're in a lot of pain. And they're like, why can't I manifest mirror why is everything working against me and it's because they're not living their truth they're not accessing that energy in them that actually wants to go out and do things as a result they never feel that divine timing and alignment that starts happening with things just and you start just moving and your the your your vision of reality starts to change and that is the crazy part because it seems like you do have a destiny but that destiny is only accessed when you enforce free will because you can choose not to follow your destiny and live in a self-made hell. Or you can move forward, be bold, live on the edge. And that's what living on the edge does is you're constantly aware and awake. You become awakened to your primal resources available to you. And you start seeing the path and you start seeing signs that come to you and you feel like you're talking to God and you start having this relationship with this supernatural force because you can understand the, the, the dynamics of the model of whatever this thing is. I haven't fully understood it, but what I have mapped it out to is these core things that I just talked about in this video. Having the self-awareness to channel to find that pure intent of that energy that wants to move to you. Second is going all in on it and having the humbleness of knowing it may not work out and living on the edge and taking massive action because you had the audacity to ask for this thing from the universe, from God, and then seeing it through to the end and trusting that it's going to be okay. And if you can do this, you will your reality will start to bend. I mean, I'm look, look where I am. I've dreamed of this day for a very long time okay ever since i was trying to come to america i've dreamt of yosemite and now i'm here and it's heaven on earth 
and it's speaking to me in so many ways of what I had to do to get here and going all in and I posted a video uh, a week ago about how little money I have left because I'm working on an AI startup that I fully believe in and I'm communicating with what I believe is God and I'm going all in on this because I believe that this is the energy where it wants to go and if it doesn't work out I also believe that there's something in this experience that is perfect maybe I'll end up homeless I don't know and if I do I'll still keep making videos and then you'll have the critical thinking to see hey this is cool <laughs> and I'd rather just be alive massively and by being alive I mean not living in preservation of you know my life Cause some people are living so much of their time burning so much of their time trying to stay alive that they forget to be alive so find that energy within you let it consume you and go all in and trust that it's going to be okay and start manifesting your dreams and if not you will manifest a much happier healthier life that you could never thought imaginable just like how i could not imagine this scenario right here right now I'm trying to create a massive financial career that's what i'm praying towards not just the money but actually moving towards the clarity and the focus on the, the right things that will take me where i want to go based on the energy that moving through me that wants to build things create things solve problems and create a life of true abundance and help uh, the planet help people around me help my loved ones and be like this crusader for the universe let that begin today so let me know how your experience goes this is goober checking out god is great find that voice and i'll see you on the next one Peace.